Hi, if you've just arrived here, then I recommend you watch part 5.1 first to get the context of what I'm going to talk about now. Option 1 eliminates all parameter values that suffered from overfitting. So in order to do this practically, you'd need to calculate the overfitting score using the method we've just gone through for each set of parameter values. Now, if you have a few hundred parameter combinations, then clearly you can't do this manually and you'll need to use code to automate it. So in MetaTrader, you'd place the code in the onTester function of your EA. In this function, you'd have a routine that iterated through each trade that was executed and performed the same analysis that I illustrated in Excel a moment ago to calculate the overfitting score. And if this score was greater than a certain threshold, so in my case I use 12, then it would be eliminated from the optimization. And the easiest way of doing that is simply returning the value of zero from on tester. Otherwise, if it isn't overfitted, then you simply calculate your performance metric in the normal way and return that value instead. Now, by performance metric, I mean the quantitative measure you use to score each parameter set. So a common one that a lot of traders use is profit factor, which is just the ratio of the profits to the losses. It's not a measure that I like personally, but at least it does incorporate both reward and risk to some degree, which is of course essential. I'll be doing a whole session on custom performance metrics in the future. But for now, I'm just going to use profit factor in my examples because it's something that people tend to be familiar with. So in this case, if the parameter values had a low enough overfitting score, you just calculate the profit factor as normal and return that from the onTester function. If the overfitting score was over 12, then you'd return zero from the function. Now this is quite a blunt method, and one major downside of it is that you might be eliminating the best parameter values. It's either black or white, in or out. So it's a relatively simple option to implement, but there are better options. Which brings us to option two. Here, we punish the performance metric value for overfitted parameter values. In MetaTrader, again, you would do this in the onTester function, but it's something that the majority of backtesting products will also allow you to do. So what would you need to code this time? Well, the same routine would iterate through each of the trades and calculate the overfitting score. But this time, instead of simply returning zero from the function, you'd punish those parameter values that were adversely affected by the overfitting so that they don't get chosen as easily. And a simple way of doing this is simply to divide the raw performance metric. So we said we would be using profit factor dividing that by the overfitting score or some function of the overfitting score. So for example, you might choose to modify your performance metric by taking the profit factor score and then dividing that by the events overfitting score. Or alternatively, you might decide if you want to, for example, punish it slightly less, then you'd use some other function like the square root. Um, and that would have the effect of reducing the profit factor for those overfitted scores, but not as much as this first option here. Now, the benefit of taking this approach as opposed to approach number one is that when you have really good parameter values, they still have a chance of being selected, even when they've suffered a little from overfitting. So it's less of a black and white decision. However, I think we can do even better. With the third option, we remove the specific overfitted trades from the optimization results before we calculate the performance metric. In this approach, we do exactly the same as we did in the previous two, and we code this in on tester. The difference here is that any specific overfitted trades get removed before the calculation of the performance metric is undertaken. So in our example, the individual overfitted trades would not play a part in the calculation of the profit factor at all. This has many advantages and means that all parameter values are still in with a chance of being selected, regardless of whether some of the trades were due to large market events or not. 
And of the three options so far, this is certainly my preferred, and it's the one that I currently use. But it is probably a little bit more complicated to implement than the others, but only marginally. Now, I just wanted to pause for a moment and ask you a question. There are topics that I've spoken about during this series, like this one, where I've coded a solution for my own use. So in this case, it's a custom performance metric that iterates through trades and removes the ones affected by news. In the last session, I spoke about using a multi-symbol EA. Now, I do already have plans to run a series on MQL coding techniques in the future, where I'll go through these examples. But I've been wondering if it would be useful to bring relevant parts of that series forward and intersperse them with this backtesting series so that you hear the theory and then you see how this is put into practice with the coding. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Just put an entry below in the YouTube comments and let me know if you think this, this would be useful. So let's get back to the options we have to avoid the effects of overfitting. The last method that I just covered is in my view the best option so far, and taking this approach will certainly help to choose more robust parameters. But of course, it still has the problem that it won't protect you from future events when you trade your system live. Which brings me on to the final option, which is something I'm currently in the early stages of developing for myself, and this will be by far the best option. So click on the link here to part 5.3 and we'll take a closer look.